Okay, so let's take a look at how we could do question number nine. <clears throat> so number nine is what's called a uh, dimensional analysis question. Um, okay, and the reason it is um, classed as such is that we are taking different types of dimensions, different types of measurements and doing a conversion um, from one to another. Okay, and depending on how complicated the um, the the units are or the or or the multiple units are um it can be a little bit hard to kind of think how to how to work through this okay so what we're doing here is we're taking a um, uh, a unit of uh fuel consumption okay which is in one case here given as miles per u.s gallon so we have this one car here the the bugatti that has a rate of um 10 um, miles for every one US gallon. I'm just going to put that as USG. Okay, and we want to move that to the Canadian measurement, which is given as a unit of liters per 100 kilometers. Okay, so to do this, we have to convert um, two units. We have to convert miles into kilometers, and we have to convert US gallons into liters. Okay, and we also have to invert the way the unit is presented because the original unit is distance per volume, where the final unit is volume per 100 units of distance. Okay, so this is a question that has a number of steps in, in, in which uh, we have to kind of uh, think through how, to, how do we do these, right? So to, before you can do a question like this, you need to know what are some of our equivalencies here when you are working with any kind of um, unit or dimensional analysis. So you need to write down what are some of our equivalent equivalencies here. Okay, so the first one you need to know here is that there are, um, in every one U.S. gallon, you have uh, 3.79 liters, okay, in terms of volume measurement. So the way that I like to do question like this is rather than think about um, what you're gonna multiply or what you're gonna divide, we're just gonna write down a couple of simple equivalencies and we're just gonna write them out as, a, as an equal statement. Okay, so one US gallon equals 3.79 liters. Okay, and then the other thing we need to know is converting miles to kilometers. Okay, so we can say one mile, um, and again, you'd have to look this up if you don't know, but one mile is equal to 1.61 um, kilometers. Okay, about 1.6 is the difference. So again, we don't, we're not gonna know whether we're multiplying or dividing um, for our units. Right now, we're just gonna write down what our equivalencies are. Okay, and then we can start to analyze how we want to, how we're going to work this question out. So our original value here, I'm just going to give you, put some more space in here, is we have 10 miles for every one US gallon. Okay, so the goal in this case is we have to eliminate the unit of miles. So whenever you want to eliminate a unit, you're, you, were, you were going to essentially multiply it by a ratio. So if miles here is currently on top, in order for it to cancel the equivalency unit, you have to put miles on the bottom, okay? And we want to be left with, which is whatever the other counterpart unit is. So in this case, it's kilometers, okay? So miles will cancel with miles, and we are going to be left with the units of kilometers. So kilometers here, we just fill in the numbers. It is 1.61 kilometers for every one a mile. Okay, so that takes care of our units, and now we're left with a unit here of kilometers um, per U.S. gallon. Now we want to get rid of the volume unit here, the U.S. gallon unit. So if U.S. gallons are already on the bottom, well, that means we have to put U.S. gallons on the top when we're multiplying it by a ratio, and we're going to have then liters on the bottom. Okay, because remember, the goal is that we're trying to get rid of the original unit. So the original unit's on the bottom. We have to multiply it by something on the top. Okay, and then we just fill in our values. We know that one U.S. gallon is equal to 3.79 liters. Okay, so then if we work through this, we've eliminated our other, the starting units, and we're now left with units of kilometers 
um, per uh, over liters. Okay, which is not exactly what we're looking for at this spot here, but it's it's something that we can start with. So if you take your calculator, okay, and we we're gonna go ten times one point six one, which is sixteen point one kilometers. Okay, all over. 1 times 1 times 3.79, 3.79 liters. Okay, so right now <clears throat> we have this unit, okay, kilometers per liter, and it says 16.1 kilometers. We can, we can drive 16.1 kilometers, but we're going to bur burn 3.79 liters of fuel. All right. Now we want to actually have the unit in terms of liters per 100 kilometers. So that just tells you how many liters it takes to drive 100 kilometers. So this unit as it stands right now here is kind of reversed, it's inverted. Okay, so we want, we could just flip this, this value. Okay, because this is just a ratio. So we're going to say, instead of liters on the bottom here, we're going to take this final answer. So I'll just go on the next line here. We're going to write it as 3.79 liters for every 16.1 kilometers. Okay, so now by flipping the units, okay, the, the top to bottom units, we have what we're looking for um, in our final configuration because we want liters per kilometers. But what we really want is we want liters per 100 kilometers. Okay. So to do this, we need to think about how does this actually work? Okay, so I'm just going to fill in a couple things here. We're going to multiply by something <clears throat> such that the bottom unit is going to go from 16.1 kilometers. Okay, we're going to end up multiplying by some factor here so that we get 100 kilometers on the bottom. Okay, so 16.1 times what number would give us 100 kilometers? And then that will give us our liters per unit on the top. Okay, so this is conceptually what, you're, what we're trying to do here. So how do I calculate what number times 16.1 will give me 100? Okay, so, so the way you would figure that out is you take the, um, the, the value you're, you want to end up with, which is 100 kilometers divided by 16.1. And that gives us the factor that we're going to multiply by. So in this case, it's going to be like 6.211. Um, one. I'll put it to three decimal spots. So whatever we do on the bottom, we have to do exactly the same on the top. Okay, because this is just like by multiplying by like the number one. Okay, 6.211 times 6.211. Okay, so... We, to get this number here, we've essentially taken 100, I'll just do it on the side here, we've taken 100 and we've divided it by 16.1 and that's going to give us 6.211. Okay, so that's the factor that we're using in order to multiply to get to 100. So then our final answer to, to express it in the unit we want is going to be 6.211, whatever that, that conversion factor is, times 3.79. And that's going to give us 23 point, we'll just leave it to one decimal here, 23.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So to drive 100 kilometers in this vehicle, it's going to take 23 and a half liters of fuel. Okay, so that's how you would do that, that, that question to get that first part of it done. Then they want you to compare which has got the better efficiency here. Um, uh, so you have to compare it to the other car, which in this case is a Tesla Model S. So if we're if we did uh, this is the Bugatti, and then I'll just put the Tesla here. Okay, I'll just put the final answer in. The final answer for the Tesla ends up being 2.3 liters per hundred kilometers. Okay, so <clears throat> the Tesla takes um, much much less fuel to go 100 kilometers, or much much less equivalent fuel equivalency. Okay, but, and you can do the same analysis um, by just putting in the starting value, which is 104 miles per U.S. gallon, and then working out the same steps that way. Okay, so that's how um, you approach a question like this. Okay, the technique of, the, of this is called dimensional analysis. Okay, and it involves by starting, writing down the units you're starting with, and then figuring out what units you want to get to. Okay, and then applying some equivalencies or conversions where things are canceling. 
each other top to bottom in order to uh, figure out what your final unit is. Okay, so this, this type of a question can doesn't just have to be with um, uh, conversions like this. It can be applied to virtually any type of unit or anything that you can measure. Um, and that's a common question that comes up in, um, in, in a lot of other types of uh, situations. Okay, so that's how that question would, would work out.